Hi, so, um, I'm not really sure exactly how I'm going to do this, but today I'm just kind of walking through one of our applications and going through the process of kind of expanding one of its designs. Uh, I don't really have anything planned for it, but basically this is our job manager application. It's an open source application. I'll leave a link to it in the description. You can go check out the GitHub repository. Uh, basically, what I want to do is have the option to, well, first of all, right now what it does is it lets you uh, manage all of your kind of like jobs or automations within Hotwax Commerce. And I want to have, I want to add the ability to um, schedule multiple jobs at once. Right now, you can only do one at a time for one, like Shopify store at a time. And I want to let users basically be able to do that in bulk. I don't really have something planned out for this. Usually you kind of should before you jump right into like designing, but let's see what I come up with. And it'll just be kind of like a nice little design session, you know, uh, it's like a design podcast, you know, you know how we do. Um, hmm. Maybe what I should do is kind of have like an overhead of me writing in my notebook just kind of like working through the user stories before because it's kind of impossible to do design without having like user stories put together so i don't know maybe eventually i'll have like top down versions of this or something or like i'll have like my phone or something record from up here it'll be a nice little way to i could probably figure that out right now but let's move so in concept, what I need is for users to be able to multi Shopify configurations, multiple stores, multiple jobs. So the way this workflow works right now is from the settings page here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pull up the application uh, side by side. So I'm going to kind of walk through what it looks like right now too as I kind of go through this. So we'll pull up the latest dev version. Uh, let me go into let's do All right, so right now, basically, the way it works is you kind of select what e-commerce store you or what catalog you're looking at, what kind of like company, and then also you kind of go into like what kind of configure what, what you want to call it, what Shopify store within that company you want to look at, and then you go through the application, select the jobs that you want to configure, stuff like that. So, for example, right now, uh, for my e-commerce store, for my sandbox, uh, I don't have product import set up which I probably should, I don't know, or we don't have order import set up. But for example, let's say I wanted to enable order import for all of my like all of my Shopify stores, all of my companies at once. There's no real way to do that right now, and I think there should be. So uh, I guess we, we kind of really have to go start from is you can't have right now in a flip, like, there's a whole separate page for your settings, which you can't really start from there. You kind of need a way to have that all happen at once. So maybe what we can do is create a whole separate page, which is kind of a lazy way to do it, but it's also the easiest way. So what I'm probably going to want to do is probably make a new section in the menu. Uh, there's a section that I never ended up using, so I'm just going to replace this with bulk editor. For now, let's just say that, and I'm just going to do schedule in bulk. And I'm going to expand this in for a second. Uh, again, should have thought through an icon for this, but I don't really have something in mind. Uh, let's see. Let's, put, let's go to ion icons and do some browsing. Something like this kind of represents a lot of things intersecting, maybe um a global that it's kind of like you're configuring everything at once so it could be an interesting way to do it we do like thunderstorm because you're doing it so much at once 
terminal. Just kind of getting techy. That's a that's a cool concept. I'm gonna go with terminal for now and just kind of you know make sure it seems technical because your average user is not really going to be using this. The idea is that somebody who's like really professional, kind of like a business analyst or a back end person, is really going to be using this. So let's see what we can come up with here. So we're going to just begin with something. Uh, let's rename this job bulk editor. Ideally, the name of this should be the same as this, but we're kind of being lazy right now. Um, just get rid of all of this because I'm not really sure what I want. So, this is step one. The person needs to be able to select their stores, like the companies. So, a product store in this context is like the company that you're talking about, and a company can have multiple e commerce stores. So, we kind of need a list or something. Actually, this is going to be kind of helpful because what I want is for users to be able to see all of their stores and select each one of them. So this is like store one, store two, and store three. So let's just say for example that, and you know what I want? Uh, recently, I added a new, um, what you call it? Where is this? A new uh, settings UI, and I want to use the description from that over here. I think descriptions are always helpful in user interfaces because kind of like even if somebody doesn't know how the system works, it helps them work their way through it. Um, they can kind of use it to understand something, hopefully. Uh, and then same. So each store, uh, out of all the stores, all their e-commerce stores. So, uh, can you really do this in bulk? I don't know, but let's start with this. So, wait, what did I call it here? Uh, within the pre-order app, what do I call it? E-commerce. E-commerce and overline. I'm just gonna give the technical name for it over here just because that helps us. Anybody who's kind of like in tune with the internals of Hot West Commerce probably will relate to this more. It's a product store, and I'm gonna get the description from this over here as well. So, I'm just gonna re relabel this. So, what's interesting now is at the end of the day, what you're really selecting is e-commerce stores because, well, there's some jobs that are related to product stores as well. Um, basically, what ha will happen is there are some jobs or some automations that you run specific to your e-commerce store, and then there's some automations that you run specific to your product store. So as a company, so for example, if you want to load your pre-order items, that's something that you run as a company, not for just one store, because one store is a manifestation of your catalog. It's a place where you're selling your products and stuff. But then there's some things like importing new orders, which is something that you do for an e-commerce store, specifically not for a company. You have to physically import something from your store, or your e-commerce. So one option here is that as a designer we don't like i don't really think much about how the user interface helps the user understand what they need to select it's kind of up to them to select the right things and then select the right processes that they want to enable because that also it provides a certain level of flexibility because they could at once schedule certain jobs that are uh E, like e-commerce specific and then some that are store specific and it kind of lets them mix and match without the app restricting them in the back end when the API call is made to schedule and process what will happen is the app will hopefully will have to program in that the app automatically just fills in what the job needs and it doesn't put in what it doesn't need so for example if an automation doesn't require an e-commerce configuration 
it'll just not send it even though the user has selected it. But it will need to somehow tell the user that this job requires you to select something. That's an interesting thought. I didn't really think about that before. So multiple jobs, so each job will have to be, the app will have to let the user know if they've selected everything that's needed for this job. Okay. So app will have to show that the user has selected all the required information. Okay. Um, so the next step is having like a job selector. You need kind of like, it's a catalog browsing section almost. Like you want to be able to like, yeah, let the user like browse their catalog. So there's two options here. One is that like we add like a pop-up or something where the user can select their jobs. The other is maybe we should just go around to like the rest of the app and add a button to all of the pages, like all of the jobs. So essentially one option, like a, a one way to do this would be every, one of these has like an add to bulk editor option right here so that the user can like go and like select everything, build out their cart in a way. And then this is their cart and then right here down below, you can't see my hand, but like down in that section below, they can kind of exactly choose or like that's where they'll see their cart and execute upon their cart. That's one way to do it. Uh, I'm not really sure what the best way to do this is actually. Um, let's just say somehow the jobs have appeared on this page, whether by selecting them through the other pages or there's like an add to add jobs button right here. So let's just say, for example, let's just add a button and it's add jobs or select jobs. And I want to, oops, I want to add an add icon, so add, add outline, and am I going to want to make this outline button, or it should probably be an outline button, because you don't want people focusing on just this, so let's go ahead and style outline, yeah, there we go, perfecto. Okay, so select jobs, not a great placement, but you know, it's good enough for now. And then down here, we're going to want a card for each job that's selected because each job's going to need relevant information to show to it. So you can't just have like an eye on item here. So for now, let's, um, how am I going to want to do this? This might be a good format, actually because I want the title of the car, of the job, and then below it, I want to show lists in a way. I want to show all the associated product stores and e-com stores that are selected. Uh, a car with two lists in it. Uh, do I have something like that? Not really. Um, why don't I, I'm just gonna go ahead and just start with this as a base. I'll often do this while designing is just like see if I can use what I've already created and just even if I'm replacing the whole thing it's just easier than starting from scratch it's like all right how can I like replace slots and something I've already designed makes it easier than you have to like go through the whole process of adding a component adding you know, the ones you need stuff like that I don't know so what, I, what I'm kind of thinking here is what I'll have is like the title of the job at the top and then below it I'll have two lists. So the first list is the product stores that are selected for this job and the configs that are selected for this job. I don't know right now how the application is going to know what's needed for that job, but I'm hoping I'm going to be able to figure it out. I think what something one something that we might have to do is like fetch through like an API call. Like the, we'll, we might have to get the job data of what kind of stuff this job needs to fully function and then maybe start from there. So from here what we'll have is like a job name. Eventually what I'll do is for now I'm putting in like placeholders kind of like values as like what like the variable should be and then eventually what I'll do is I'll create like a draft of this. 
once I'd like to design, I'll fill in kind of like dummy data so that it's also, I can see it once with what potentially it looks like uh, with sample data. Let's tatter, get rid of that. I'm gonna go with divider. Oh, I hate that this is like this. I should cut content. I should probably fix that in the primary component as well. But, um, so this is product store. What did I call it? Store? Stores. So that's like the colloquial name for it. And I also want to add another list component. So hopefully when I select this, yes, it'll add it below. Nice. Or actually what I could have done is just duplicate this and call this e-commerce. Yeah. And so all the e-commerce that I select up here will, if they're applicable to this job, they'll show up right here. Um, is that a good way to do it? Or should I just show which of the attributes that are selected above are going to be applicable down here? I think that might be a better way to do it. Is properties or parameters? And then, so this one is store, and this one is e-commerce. And just get rid of this, and just get rid of this. This way, the user just knows it's this right here, and then right here we can maybe put in how many they've selected or missing. So it can be like an error message, like, oh, you haven't selected a store yet. Or maybe it can be how many you've selected. So that's probably a good way to do it. So what if it's like, two stores selected and then if you haven't selected something what it'll look like is there will be a badge so it's like you can call the user out like hey you need to select a badge to make this work and so within here it'll be like no e-commerce selected and then this thing will be a scary color it's like oh Got to take care of this, right? I think that's probably a better way to do it. And then here I need like a schedule or two because a lot of times these jobs will need schedules. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to want to use this. I'll keep it over here for now. So right here. I think what I'm going to want to do is here. I don't need so much space here. I'm going to, I think for each item, there should be a way to have the period or like the speed of, or like the frequency. Uh, what do I, what do I call it right now in this thing? Schedule. Yeah. Schedule. So the schedule, and then, uh, I'm going to want to use the select piece right here and so somehow I want to convey that you can select the thing that's up here so there because there's gonna be like a scheduler up here too so um, I'm just gonna say bulk for now and so what you can do still is go ahead and for example, if you want to add a custom time to this, you can still pull out a popover, and this will have like the job name right here. And you can replace the bulk operation with this. So basically it lets you override at the job level if you want to, or if you don't want to, you can just use the thing you have at the top. So this is kind of like how I imagine this will work. And... I think for now I'm going to want to do something where let me let's do 16 for now and scheduler. I'm just going to call it a scheduler for now. Um, schedule. Well, first I want runtime because it's that's what it is everywhere else. Is it one word or was it? It's two words. And 
Oh, they're input fields, aren't they? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to copy them. If that's the case. Or it's not. It is an item. Okay. I'm going to want an icon over here. I should still just copy them. Why would I bother going through the processing? Yeah, that's job card. Boom. Yep, there we go. Fill container. Move them up. And get rid of this. Description later. So this is... Where you can select what the runtime for every single job is. I think this comes first. Schedule, yeah. So what else do you need? I think you're going to want a runtime, uh, what you want to call it? A uh, runtime selector on the item level as well. Ooh, I have a list. I'm going to have to make it in the list. Alright, here we go. See, this is where using components becomes kind of annoying because now I have to follow this thing and I didn't hmm. list item come on here we go three column pm So these aren't in the same order as they are up here, which I don't like, but then I'm going to have to redo this whole thing, which I'm not really, I don't really, oh fuck, okay, come on. I'm just going to go ahead and, boom, there we go. I'm just going to go the lazy way right now and just add a bulk action button up here. Let me get rid of these three. The button, schedule, is that it? all jobs so i'm probably going to go with that or i'm going to have a fab down here in the bottom right that's going to be like schedule jobs Doo -doo -doo -doo. uh be a good icon for schedule and be send just represent that it's a bunch of stuff uh speedometer yeah because you're doing you're kind of going 90 miles an hour you know I like the ice cream cone because it's kind of like a special something. Let's go with the ice cream cone. It doesn't mean something. It's like a non-technical thing, but it's also kind of fun, you know. Did we do it? Is this kind of all we need? Now the question is, should you be able to edit stuff? This is great if you want to just like schedule something, but how do you edit stuff? Mm, I didn't really think of that. Ooh, schedule in bulk, but this does not support editing something that you've already done. Then you have to kind of like go and do them all one by one, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Ugh. Should this be the same though? Because then you're probably putting too much stuff into the same thing. Um, that's a whole situation though, because like how would you even do that? Because jobs are constantly changing if you've pulled up a job that you want to edit but then it's already done and it's finished how do you get this thing to get a scheduled one maybe you could have like a selector on each one of these that like oh edit scheduled job maybe i don't know So this is schedule in bulk. I would say editing in bulk, like editing running jobs in like all at once should just be a whole other workflow because it's just such a pain. You can't like have the same interface to do both. Like you, you have to either come at it from a whole new set of jobs or you have to come at it from how do I change like an interface that's designed to easily get you what you already have running. You can't have you can't have both. That's just cheating. Like you know, it just doesn't work that way. You can't have your cake and eat it. You have to. If you put too much together in, in into the same interface, I think it's just going to become too way too confusing. So I'm going to go with the fab for now. To get rid of that button. And I'm kind of happy with this for now. I don't. I haven't really thought of like what the mobile interface for this is going to be. 
what it might what I might have to do is like huh how would I even make it like a two step process somehow it could just be one long page for now because most of the people using this are just like on a laptop yeah I'm gonna call that good so that's how to do easy design maybe lazy a little bit but with the Ionic design kit I just kind of walk through how I roughly approach design and maybe it's good maybe it's terrible but that's just how I do it and yeah we job managers actually a really interesting application especially if you are using OF biz or hot West commerce uh, because the job scheduler within OF biz is like not great like the interface is pretty constraining and I feel like job manager definitely helps out us do a much better job than what the job scheduler within OF biz naturally allows us to do. So I don't know what this was. Maybe you know. Maybe you didn't even watch the whole thing. Maybe I didn't even edit this whole thing. Who knows? But if it's on YouTube, then. Huh. All right. Peace out.